Hello everyone, back to you to today's first video. We're going to have a look at the ECDF 30-day model for today's first video. Uh, so we're looking at the weather for the next four weeks across the UK and the rest of Europe as well. In terms of temperature and precipitation anomalies, we can't show you mean seal and pressure or 500 mm bar heights with this, unfortunately. But you can get a rough idea of what the model is uh, expecting, what it's predicting from its temperature and precipitation anomalies. So that's what we're doing for today's first video. Later on, we'll have a regular week to 10-day video update with all of the usual features. We're at the Hungarian Met Office of it, so big thank to them for supplying us with the charts. Right, let's get on with it then. I'm going to start off with the uh, week one temperature anomaly for uh, Europe. It's week 20 for the year, week one for our forecast period. And uh, we see many parts of uh, Europe have uh, really uh, significantly below average temperatures this week, particularly so for northern parts of Europe. So from like Scandinavia going down into uh, southern parts of uh, Germany and Poland, we see temperature anomalies quite widely between around 3 and 6 degrees below average. One little part of Norway is actually going from... Uh, 6 to 10 degrees below average, very, very cold uh, across the northern parts of Scandinavia, cold enough for late season snowfalls, I think, across the northern parts of Europe. The UK, Ireland and France, we're below average, not as significantly so, but nevertheless, we're still around 1 to 3 degrees uh, below average. Spain and Portugal, also quite significantly colder than average, but then as we come through the Mediterranean, it gets much warmer, so we've got Italy here, for example, at 3 to 6 degrees above average, I mean, go down to the extreme southeastern corner of uh, Europe through here, particularly through parts of Greece and Turkey, but also extending up to the Balkans. We see temperature anomalies of around uh, 3 to 6 or 6 to 10 degrees above average. So it's much warmer in the southeastern corner. And that is one of the typical ways that the weather does balance itself out. If it's doing one thing in the northwest, it will tend to do the opposite in the southeast. So, uh, yes, significantly hotter than average in the southeast. Heat wave conditions probable for Greece and Turkey in the southeastern med. Uh, but in the north and west, we have uh, really been thrown back in towards winter-type conditions. Our precipitation anomaly for week one, taking us from the 11th to the 17th of May, is also uh, looking like this. So in the southeastern corner, where it's hottest, it's also pretty dry down there. It is dry in the northwest as well, though. So for Ireland, the UK, up into uh, the low countries, uh, much of northern Germany, and then into particularly southern parts of Norway, Sweden, and Denmark, we find that uh, the precipitation anomaly is drier than average, so this is indicative of the blocking area of high pressure, of course, that's, uh, that's bringing this cold weather. We do have a swathe of more unsettled conditions from Spain and Portugal in the southwest through to southern parts of France, especially around the Côte d'Azur. I mean, going up towards northern parts of Italy around the Alps. Again, could be some late season snowfalls through uh, these mountainous areas. I mean, extending northwards into uh, central parts of Poland and then up in towards uh, the uh, northeast of Europe. So uh, countries like Latvia, Estonia, those sort of areas likely to be um, seeing above average precipitation. Some of that rain, some of that snow, of course, with the cold temperatures. And that extends into western parts of uh, Russia as well. Being through to week two, this is how things are looking. It's uh, week 21 for uh, for the year. Week two for our forecast period takes us from the 18th through to the 24th of May. We see that the cold of an average uh, temperature and always are being pushed away to the north and east. So it really is northern and eastern parts of Europe from Scandinavia down to Black Sea that have got below average temperature and always and still significantly so, three to six degrees quite wide across northern parts of Scandinavia, three to six degrees below average. Much of Eastern Europe and Western Russia also around 3 to 6 degrees below average. In the West, it's turning warmer. So for Ireland, UK, France, uh, sort of low countries, western parts of Germany, down in Spain and Portugal, the temperature anomaly there is picking up to become above average, quite widely, 1 to 3 degrees above average. And there is a small area around central parts of England that's actually going to 3 to 6 degrees, but above average. So what a change from week 1 to week 2, 18th to 24th of uh, May. Down into the Mediterranean, uh, we see that most places, are uh, warmer than average, especially through this central bowl uh, of the Med. Although it's not quite as hot in this southeastern corner from the Balkans down to Greece and Turkey. Not quite as hot uh, through there, but still overall a little bit on the warmer 
than average side. Very dry as well in week two across much of uh, Europe. Again, this is precipitation anomaly from the 18th to 24th of uh, May. Um, Mediterranean looks a little bit mixed, so close to average with precipitation really through much of the Mediterranean. But going further north, actually, most parts of Europe are either slightly dry than average or rather more significantly dry than average. So um, we've got uh, much of Western Europe here, including Ireland and the UK. Uh, looking uh, really quite dry and that does extend up into northern parts of uh, Europe as well so quite a quite a dry uh, week coming up there for much of Europe and also becoming much warmer particularly across the western side of Europe Moving through to week three, week 22 uh, for the year. It takes us from the 25th of May to the 31st, last day of the month. This is how things are looking. So, again, it's a little bit on the cold and heavy side across many northern and eastern parts of Europe. It does look as though temperatures really going to struggle to recover across much of northern and northeastern and eastern Europe. So, from, again, from Scandinavia down to Black Sea, it's widely below average, around one to three degrees uh, colder than average. The western side of Europe looks warmest. So, again, we've got Ireland. Ireland, the UK, France, Spain, Portugal coming out at around uh, f uh, three, uh, one to three degrees uh, above average. And um, then going through the Mediterranean, uh, we see that it's a bit of an east-west split, really. So western parts of the Med, from Spain to Italy, overall above average uh, through there. But in the south, in the east and southeastern part of the Mediterranean, it's near and normal. So it does look though quite a significant pattern shift takes place in the second half of May across Europe. So we begin. Uh, this period with the north and the west generally cold and the south southeast generally warm and we flip that around by the end of May it's warmest in the north and the west and it's coolest in the southeastern corner precipitation anomalies uh, are weakening as they usually do in week three but nevertheless we still see that it's slightly drier than average across northern parts of Europe and also to some degree in this southeastern corner interestingly otherwise there's lots of white going on lots of no signal covering many parts of uh, Europe at this point and then finally go through to week four it's uh, week 23 for the year it's the first week of june taking us from the first week to the seventh of june cold and average temperature anomalies then are receding away to the very far north of scandinavia so the far north of norway the far north of sweden and still in baltic uh, sea sort of uh, areas but the colder temperatures are receding away to the north most parts of europe are warmer than average here as we begin uh, official meteorological summer of uh, 2020 we begin Get it on a warmer than average note not excessively so but quite widely sort of one to three degrees below average and as this is week four and signals are typically quite weak by week four it is indicative of the fact that we could actually see uh, a very warm spell of weather setting up across many parts of Europe uh, as we move through to the beginning of meteorological summer these signals for precipitation again continuing to uh, weaken. Some of these western parts of Europe looking a little bit drier than average. But overall, I think the signal is too weak to draw too many uh, conclusions. But I would suspect that those warmer than average temperature anomalies are probably being produced by high pressure. Uh, so I would have thought we're likely to be seeing uh, a drier and warmer spell of weather setting up in the second half of May, particularly later on in the month, and that carries us through probably to the beginning of June. So we've got a cold shock at the moment across many uh, parts of Europe. We will see, as early as next week, Western Europe becoming warmer. It's going to take a while to warm things up on the eastern and northern side of Europe. Though. So the northeast of Europe, down that eastern side of Europe, and also across Scandinavia, will take quite a, quite a couple of weeks for, to, to, to really start to warm things up. Up. But by the time we get through to the beginning of June, most parts of Europe should be warmer, and I suspect a lot of uh, a lot of Europe will be going drier and high pressure as well. Remember, it's just a snapshot of what these miles are showing, so it could all look very, very different uh, next week. Any forecast beyond five to seven days is fraught with danger, but that's what we're seeing uh, today. Right, we'll be back later on with your week's 10-day uh, video update. Signs of something significantly warmer on the way for next week. We've already touched on this uh, with, uh, with um. Uh, this video, but we'll go into it in more detail in uh, today's second video update. So we'll be back. We'll be back for that later on. Uh, that's all for now, though, and thanks for watching.